This video is going to be on my yellow car Mac. It's a hot rod and I'm going to give you guys a little progress update on the tuning. It's going pretty well. And if you haven't been following along on this build, this is a 3.2 liter engine with Kinsler 46 millimeter ITBs. And it's running an Mtron SL6 ECU. I've been doing a lot of part throttle tuning here on the road and I keep increasing the rev limit. I was at 3000, now I'm at 5000 and I've got it tuned to the point where it's driving in a safe mode. So I'm gonna stop talking and just drive it. And then I'll come back and give you guys like a little summary of my methodology of, of going through the tuning process and a little bit how the Mtron works with the laptop. Enjoy. It's really hard to convey like the seat of the pants feeling uh, with video in the car, especially with a you know, simple microphone, but it is infinitely more lively to drive versus the old Motronic system. So it's just way smoother. It's super docile at like speed bumps and parking lots, but it makes like amazing race car sounds when you blip the throttle 
or just rev it in a corner or whatever. It's like instantly responsive. I'm still taking it, you know, easy on the engine. It's um, only 75% max throttle in some of those drives. That one U-turn and I took off on PCH, I'll put the trace, the uh, throttle trace here on the screen. I don't think it gained a whole lot of power with this ITB upgrade, but it just gives it a way better sound way more connected to the engine. As soon as you get on the throttle, like in a corner or just accelerating in a straight line, you get full feedback in the pedal and the engine just responds like right away. So it's way more fun to drive. Well, speaking of tuning and great sounds, Zach and friends are back from college. So check it out. Bravo and thank you to Andrew and Zach. So it's, it's pretty hard to describe the whole tuning process in just a couple minutes. But the highlights are, I basically took the timing curve from like a 1982 SC. Those are published in the workshop manual. That's a pretty conservative baseline for kind of moderate to full throttle. And I typically bumped up the timing a little bit in part throttle conditions, just like vacuum advance would. So this is a 3D curve showing the timing map. Um, it's pretty conservative. I also took a little bit of timing away under full throttle and high RPM conditions. So we just don't want to hurt the motor. I can dial in the fuel map and then come back to timing if we want to push the envelope a little bit. This engine is equipped with dual knock sensors. So we could run right up to the ragged edge and ultimately let the Mtron pull timing back if it was the sense of knock. It has full knock control and all the abilities. But uh, right now, like I said, it's a conservative map. We're just trying to get it to run um, and also get the fueling pretty close. And then we'll go back and revisit the timing. So on the fueling side, what I'm doing is I'm driving the car with the data log on and I'm driving it through various points in the, in the map. So for instance, I can drive it at 3000 RPM and 10% throttle opening, and I can hold it there by using the brakes. I can hold it in different gears and so forth. Maybe that's fourth gear. I can uh, do that for four or five seconds and then pull over, look at the data log, and the data log is recording all the sensors, but most importantly, I'm looking at the wide band um, O2 sensor and it's got dual left and right banks and I'm and I'm looking at that and I'm looking at what the Mtron is doing for correction. So it, right now it's set up short term fuel trim only and it's it's plus minus 20%. So the Mtron is trying to always hit the target air fuel ratio or lambda number and if it has to add say it adds 15%, that means that there's an error in the air model and that means that I can go in the air and fuel model and I can make that 10% change or 15% change. And then next time I drive through that next point, 
it's going to be a lot closer. So you can always rely on the short-term fuel trim. It has a long-term fuel trim too, which is even better, but I haven't turned that on yet. I can, <clears throat> I can rely on that, but it's always better to tell the Mtron exactly how much fuel to expect. So when you're rapidly going through a uh, section of that map, you know, like you're accelerating in first gear or something, you're not hitting all those sails for three seconds. You're doing it in a fraction of a second. So as long as the Mtron knows what sort of fuel to give it at that range, it'll always pick from there. And it doesn't have to work so hard at adjusting, you know, plus 10% here, minus 15% here. It always has a good baseline. And then the closed loop control will make minute adjustments to that. As the fuel table gets more and more accurate, we can then rein in those uh, bounds instead of like plus minus 20%, maybe it's only plus minus 10%. And those are just for small changes, you know, due to season variations or whatever like that. But uh, basically that's what I'm doing. Um, some parts of the table are a little hard to access because it's either like 1000 RPM and 100% throttle position. You would never do that. That's not good for the engine and you just have to basically extrapolate those. And then some parts of the table are under deceleration, so it's not that critical in those regions, but um, all the way up to basically full throttle and almost 5,000 RPM, I've, I've gotten the map pretty close. So now when I'm driving like I did in the video, it's not bogging or hiccuping or coughing or basically it's, it's running pretty good. There's still more room for improvement and you know, the more time I get with it and the more data logs I review, each time it just gets better and better and better. That's the basics. There's a lot more to do to set this up. It's not as simple as, as just changing that table. The Mtron has got so many parameters and there's aspects related to the control parameters. There's how long it takes for the wideband O2 sensor to actually kick in. So that delay can skew the numbers there's all kinds of fuel injection and timing and injector information. So it, there's a lot to it. I don't want to oversimplify this whole EFI process. It's a lot to learn, but I think it's, it's, been, um, it's been worth it. Like I said, the car is really fun to drive.